Hi, welcome to this week's painting demonstration. My name is Rex Beanland and this week we're going to do a study that really is a study of light. Um, painting 140 pound arches cold press painting paper. So I brought in my full palette. I won't use everything but I'll use a lot of them. So I'm just going to point out some of the colors here. This is CAD Yellow Light, CAD Yellow Medium, Naples Yellow probably use those. I have a little cad orange possibly. Cad red light, uh, quinacridone rose. Uh, over here in the blue section there's some cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo turquoise. Okay so the first part what I'm going to do is to do this, the, create this sense of the light coming down here. Streaks and rays of light. So I want it to be fairly light. I'm going to start with a little CAD yellow light and uh, I want to take a little bit of time to get this right before the, I move on. So we'll start up here. Then we're going to switch, so I'm going to switch to a little bit of Naples yellow just to give me some variety here. And down here where the light's hitting, I want to keep this section here, the uh, light hitting on this marble floor, I want to keep it basically white. I want to keep this this end of the color uh, really loose and have it gradually fade off. So I'm going to use my spray bottle when I get there. But for now I'm going to stop these sh strokes short of the... Um, short of the end here. Kind of let them end up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, just my spray bottle here and just spray the end, keep everything nice and wet. And in here I want to keep that Uh, fairly white so I'm just going to blot that up and also yeah I like there's some variety in here there's some of the lighter cad yellow light and then the yellow ochre also what I want to do is I'm going to just lighten it up here by blotting it and I'm going to begin with creating some of these streaks yeah okay and now I want, at, from this, this is the brightest light, I want to shift right away into a, a redder mixture. And I want to keep it a light value. Over here. And also over here. And just the odd one. Anything that will kind of reinforce the idea of light streaks of light coming down there. Just a little bit more of this. Red. Just some plain water here just to soften all that. Okay. And now I want it to spray it down here. I don't get any hard edges. Just take that a little further. So I look at this. Uh, are these two much like streaks? Just soften them a little bit. If I surround it by some darks, it uh, will really start to uh, make this light really pop out. So I want some darks around here, so I to make this dark, cad red light, I'm going to actually move over here to some cerulean blue, the complement of cad red light. And we'll throw in a little bit of everything. Now the Naples yellow, very thick 
opaque color and it lightens that mix up so I don't really want that. So I'll kind of cover it out by going back to those colors. Add a little bit of ultra, ultramarine to darken it. Yeah, and that's more what I want. Okay, and then right over the top here I want to have the darkest. So I'll go with some Ultra, a little dioxazine purple, CAD red light again. Okay, and then it, this is quite a red mixture so I'll add some little green. This is a little Viridian just to counteract that redness. Hopefully bring me back to a darker. And I want this to be a fairly intense dark, and I'm going to go around here. Ooh, that's going to be very intense. I'm going to tilt the board a bit so this can run. I don't want it to run too much into the light there. And while this board is up, I'll just do some more of that. Okay, now I want to, uh, I think I'm going to just add some warms up here. Ooh, that's a little too warm. Up here. I'm going to add a little bit right at the top there. Okay, now this is very red. I think once again I'll add just a little green to counteract that all that redness. And this is permanent green light. So I'm really just trying to create a shape here, not worrying uh, at all about detail. Just trying to create a, sh a value or a shape with a darker value and then I'm going to go over to this side doxazine purple so I'll add a bit of yellow to counteract that a little red a little green a little bit of everything I think I'll take a bit more cerulean And bring this down here. And there's just another little part that sticks out there. Yeah, I think that might be that might just be okay. You can see that this light now really does pop out because it's surrounded by darks. And I'm whether I like it or not, I've got really soft edges here, but I'm going to go with those. A bit of a hard edge there, so that'll do it. But I kind of like the airy fairy nature of this. Now I just want to get a bit of this floor at the bottom. So I'm going to take some ultramarine, a little orange, and a little of this. So I've got the, it's a similar mixture, but it's a lighter value. Yeah. I think I, I need to let it dry, so I'm just looking, do I want to do anything up here? I'm afraid if I try and lift it out, which I'm going to do just to see what happens, but I'm pretty sure it's going to stain the paper underneath, but we'll see. Oh, that's fine. It is stained, but that's fine. So I'm taking a kind of a damp brush and then drying the brush so it becomes thirsty. The, the damp part activates the paint, then making the brush dry.
turns it into basically a sponge and it lifts it up. So I'll take a bit down here. Yes, and what I'm going to do is take some of this light value dark color. I'm just going to test it first. I think that'll be just fine. I don't want it too dark. And I want a couple of strokes like that. Just don't want it to be too Okay, and I think what I'll do now, rather than lifting that out, I'm going to take my Kleenex again. Yeah, that's better. That gives me, see those look to me more like rays of light coming in there. It gets rid of that hard, hard edge. Okay, so I'm going to just let this dry and then we will be back to do the next section. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just demonstrate, there's a lot of figures down here and I'm just going to show the way we're doing them. The first part, I just want to get, I have a small round and I want just a, a selection of colors on my palette. Let me get some of these blues happening. Then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to stop for a second so I can zoom in so you can see what I'm going to be doing. Okay, I've just uh, zoomed in here and I'm going to just do some of these figures. And I guess the secret is you, you stop thinking of, of figures, just think of really of a blob of paint. And as long as you kind of put head shapes on it and leg shapes on it, it'll read as people. So I'll take, a, I'm just going to take some and I'm just changing the color all the time. So if I do... If I come down here, I can beat the boss there. Anyway, so if I do that, ultimately that's going to read very comfortably as a group of figures. So I'm going to use that approach. I'm not going to worry about any uh, drawing any particular figure. I'm just going to do masses, put a head shape on them, and a leg shape on them. And since I have this here, I'm just going to show another thing that I was, that I just learned myself. If we just put at the bottom of this, put a little blob of paint and then rub it with our fingers, we can get a nice reflection. Okay, so I'm back to the painting. So I'm just going to do the basically the same thing. The only, <clears throat> the only thing I'm going to be aware of, the figures I want closer are going to be um, more intense color and as they get further away they will be lighter and grayer. So I'll just start up here. too wet.
I like that uh, little bit of green in there. Not definitely don't want too much water on your brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one here and I'll actually go right over this and I want one to be a much closer figure. Apparently I'm a figure with crossed legs. And his or her buddy I guess the point that this makes is it is really hard to go wrong with this. Because these are really just blobs. So that's going to be one group, the closer group. And now as it gets further away, I want to neutralize it a bit. So a lighter value, more water added to it, and mixing the colors to get more of a gray. And in this, uh, when you're doing this, the, as the figures get closer, they get longer, but the head level tends to stay the same. So I want some that are quite far off here. Now the other thing that I, I want to make sure I have one, two, three shapes that are fairly similar in size and even fairly evenly spaced. So I need to break those up. I think what I'll do is I'll have this group just join up with that group. Okay, and I also want to figure over here, it's going to be in the dark, but I have one over here that's going to be right up close. I'm going to have his girlfriend. beside him. Have them holding hands. Just want to brighten up these because they're the closest. Just have them stick out a little bit more. Yes. And that, oh, nice. Little blast of red there. And this is very wet so I'm just wondering if I just drag it down. And for those ones that have already dried, I'll just add a little color and drag that down. I 
And I also want to take one here. Make that a bit of a larger one. And maybe just a little bit of variety back here. And let's throw, even though they're off in the shadow here, throw a little bit of color, not too much. Okay, so that's pretty much the figures done.